hello everyone and welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is osereme and in today's video we are going to be making this beautiful dress i'm putting on right now you can see it's inspired by the pink picture i have on this side this dress is originally designed by Desire iyama and we are going to be learning how to go about the cutting and sewing in this video so let's get started so guys to make this dress i am going to be using this fabric here it's mikado silk and the color is actually fuchsia pink but the camera is just doing something to it that it doesn't even look like what it is right now i have two yards here but if you're on a bigger side you need you definitely need more fabric and if you're making a longer dress you will need more than two yards so to start off with this tutorial i have my pattern paper here and i'm going to draw a straight line across to serve as the starting line now because this is going to be a tube dress i'm going to be extending my tape from that line i drew so i extend my tape by about six inches okay so it's six inches on the line i drew now and from that point i'm going to go ahead and mark my bust point at nine and a half i'll mark my under bust at 12 and a half and then i'm going to go ahead and mark my waist at 15 and then i'll mark my hip right here and then lastly i'll mark the length that i want this dress to be so i'm going to go ahead and mark it here at 37 so i'm going to go ahead and draw straight lines across all these points so now i have the bust line under bust line waist line hip line and lastly we have the length i'm just <laughs> label that length but that's the hemline now coming to the bust line i'm going in on the bust line under bust line waistline and hip line with half of my nipple to nipple measurement i marked it on all the points and i'm going to use my stretch ruler to connect all these points like this to give me a straight line now once this is done on the waistline you're going to go out on both sides of the first line by half of an inch so this way we are going to be able to join the points together to give us our dart so from the bust line i came down by one inch and from the one inch point i came down by i'm just going to connect to meet the waistline just like you see me doing like this now from the waistline i'm going to measure down four inches towards the hip and then i'm going to connect from the waist down to this four inches point here to connect my dart so now on the first line i am going to go in by my bust measurement divided by four the first line is actually serving as our chest line here so my bust measurement divided by four i'll mark it here now on the bust line as well i'm going to divide my bust measurement by four and mark it here now on the waist you're going to divide your waist measurement by four and make a mark now because this is the waist i will need to replace the darts that i've taken before so i measured the dart and from the point i drew before i replaced the one inch now on the hip i'm going to divide my hip measurement by four and mark it and the same measurement i marked on the hip i'll just repeat it on the hemline so now i'm going to go ahead and join all the last points together to give me my body shape so from the chest line this is the chest line okay so from the chest line to the bust line from bust to waist and then from the waist to the hip so i'm going to be using my hip curve to just connect all the points together so now from the center i'm going to come in here by about six inches so i'm going to mark it here this is my neck width and from the chest line i came down by one and a half inch and i'm going to connect these two points together to give me a kind of armhole so now this is all for the drafting out of the front pattern i'm just going to go ahead and uh, cut out everything just make sure to look at the areas i'm cutting out so that you don't make any mistake so guys this is all for now so the next thing we want to do is to draw out the curve that is going to be on the side of the dress so that we can make that um gather effect on the side so some people actually have this gather effect below the um the waistline but for this particular dress i'm going to be making it exactly on the waistline so i'm coming in by two inches from the waist and after that i'm just going to extend the dart line all the way to the end of the dress just like i've done here okay so once you're done extending the dart line to the end of the dart 
you're going to connect from the end of the dart to that two inches point you came in by on the waist once you're through with that it's going to give you this curved shape that i have here and once you're through go ahead and cut it out so guys this curve i just cut out is going to be the one that we're going to use to get the gathers on the side of the dress so we're going to be leaving this aside for now and i'm going to go ahead and cut out the body of the dress now for the body of the dress this is the front piece i cut it in a fold as you can see this is the center it's folded so i added stitching allowances to the top to the armhole to the side i added one and a half and to every other side i added half an inch now the front and the back are almost the same thing you can see i have two pieces for the back as well the only difference between the front and the back is that before cutting the back i left about one and a half inch on this side that's going to serve as zipper allowance at the back so that's just the difference between the front and the back so now to draw the gathers on the side of the skirt i'm going to mark this side here let me label it s so that i'll know which part is going to be the side of the skirt and which part is going towards the dress okay so once you've marked the side go ahead and come towards the end of your pattern paper like i'm doing here divide it into four and then take that point all the way to the top of the paper just like i'm doing here and label one to four once you're done labeling your patterns just go ahead and cut through the lines that you have drawn as you can already tell we are going to be doing slash and spread method with these patterns so now i'm going to go ahead and fold my fabric into two so that we will cut out these patterns onto my fabric so i have my fabric here folded into two this is the center part here so at this end i'm going to have to draw a straight line across so that i'll be able to arrange all the patterns on the same line so i used my pencil for this it's visible to me i didn't want to use chalk here so the pattern labeled s that's pattern number one you are going to place it on the folded edge and you are going to make sure that it ends exactly on the line you drew out earlier after placing that you are going to arrange pattern two and pattern three in the same direction so once you're true go ahead and pin it down when going about this part the amount of fabric you fold actually depends on how full you want the pleating on the side to be what i have here is 34 inches folded into two so it's actually like 17 inches on a fold so now i'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line across the top about half an inch away from where my pattern paper ended just like you see me doing like this and then you're going to go ahead and cut it out like i said before the width of my fold is currently 17 inches and you know this is in a fold so that means that for each side i have 34 inches that i'm going to be pleating so now i'm going to go ahead and remove the pins now that i'm done cutting this out so guys when you open it up it's going to look like this for each side so this is one side i'm going to pleat it and the other side pleated so you can see what it's going to look like so now we're going to bring back the center front piece open it up and what we're going to do is to get the pieces we are going to put in front for the effect that you see in front of the dress so i've cut out these rectangular pieces and i'm going to show you guys the measurements i use now for the length i have 12 inches and for the width i have 6 inches so i cut out actually 12 pieces of this so i'm going to sew it and then fold it into two to give me the effect in front so i'm going to stitch this side with about half inch do the same thing for all the other pieces as well i'm done stitching it down now and you can see what i have here so this is what yours should look like i went ahead to iron it out and now when you fold it into two it already gives the um, design effect in front so i have 12 in total for six of them i went ahead to overlock the ends because these ones are going to be the second layers the ones i did not overlock are going to be the first layer and they're not going to actually show because i'm going to line the neckline so that's it for this now for the body part i went ahead to cut our lining i didn't have a pink fabric to use our lining so i'm just using this spread so i made sure that it's about half inch shorter than where my curve started from on the front piece okay so what i'm going to go ahead and do now is to use this to line the neckline area and the side of the upper part of the dress 
so before i'll go ahead and line this i will need to arrange all these square rectangular pieces that I actually ironed out earlier in the same length just like you see me doing like this make sure to arrange them on the neckline make sure that you have one on the center no matter what you're doing make sure everything is well arranged and they are maintaining the same length and then go ahead and pin it down so guys for the second layer what i'm going to do is from the first layer we had i'm going to measure two inches and i'm going to use this to draw a straight line across so just like we did on the first part i'm going to actually start from the center here so i'm going to place one on the center and i'm going to go ahead and pin it down so you can see that these ones are just going to be placed exactly on it so that's why i told you guys to make sure that you overlock these pieces so that it doesn't fray when you put it on because these are going to be in front of the dress so i'm going ahead to just pin it down right now as at this time i've only placed five on both ends both the first and second layer so i'm going to go ahead and stitch this area down and then also stitch this top as well so after stitching everything this is what i had i actually just made a top stitch so this is what i have so guys for the strap i couldn't get the exact one that they used in the picture i was trying to recreate so i had to make this myself by braiding a lot of threads together to get this okay so now i'm going to place the strap here on the second and here on the second on this part can you see where i place them so now i'm going to go ahead and use my lining to cover everything up and i'm going to be stitching the top of the neckline i would top stitch and turn it over to the wrong side and then stitch the armhole and the sides so guys this is what i had after i was done turning the neckline with the lining and also i went ahead to stitch down my darts now what i did was the remaining two pieces i had on my ruffles i decided to just place them here so that it will make the neckline more fuller so now i have a total of 12 on the neckline so now for the back i also went ahead to turn the neckline of the back with the lining i cut out but after this i realized that we actually cut out the front and the back exactly the same and the back does not need to have an armhole so i'm cutting about one inch away from the top of the neckline so that i can turn everything over to the wrong side again and just stitch this area back to give me like a normal straight neckline for the back after doing that i'm basically going to go ahead and finish up the back so i'm going to stitch my dart on the back and then i'll fix my zipper to the center back so guys this is what i had after i was done with the back you can see i've stitched down the darts so now the next thing is to join the front and the back together on the side so i'm just going ahead to pin it down so now i'm going to go over to the sewing machine and stitch this area and this area down with my body measurement and then i will overlock all the sides this is what it looks like after i was done overlocking the sides and stitching down the sides as well so now the side is looking like this you can see it has like a should i call this a c and n <laughs> whatever it is so i also went ahead to overlock the sides of these areas we're going to be using for the gorge on the side so it's going to be something like this right you need to overlock it because um, it's not lined but if you actually are using the fabric that you can line you don't need to bother yourself with overlocking the edges so i'm going to pleat this on this side and then i'll pleat the other one on the other side as well so i'm going to pick the end of the dress and pick the end of the area i'm going to be pleating in so pick the ends like this and then go ahead and pin it down so i'm going to pin all the areas that are straight down until i get to the curve so everything just go ahead and continue pinning these areas straight just like you see me doing like this and when you get to where the curve on the dress started just stop so i'm going to stop here so let me just pin this one down here as well so i'll pin this area down i just want the 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 pleats to be on the curve exactly so now this is it for this side so to do the other side you will need to turn the dress over to the wrong side so i'm just going to turn this over to the wrong side just like you see me doing like this and then i'm going to also just arrange the straight part of the back and then go ahead and pin it down until i get to the area where the curve started
so this is where the straight part ended on the back as well so now what i have is a little part left on the body of the dress and then a lot on the fabric i want to add to it so basically what it means is that we're going to be pleating this to fit into the area where we have left on the dress i hope you guys understand i could not pin it down so this is something i'll have to do on the sewing machine so i'm just going to continue to um make gathers on this part here and then stitch every other part straight so all of this is going to be pleated into this small space i hope you guys understand so guys this is me on the sewing machine so i'm starting with the straight part that's like the easiest part so just go ahead and stitch the straight part all the way to where your pin stop this is very compulsory it's compulsory for you to actually pin this down so that you don't make any mistakes so when you get to the area where the curve started you're basically going to start making your pleats so because you have already pinned down the other end as well you know exactly where to start stitching straight again so you can see what is happening here so i'm just going to pleat or everything everything it must not be left so just put everything in and then continue with the straight part when you get to the straight part on the other side so yeah this is what i have i'm done with the pleats and now i'm continuing with the straight part all the way to the end and that's basically how to go about stitching this gorge to the side of the dress so guys this is what it looks like after i was done stitching it down i actually really hope that you guys understood what i did here so i've gone ahead to do the exact same thing on the other side of the dress and this is what i have and basically once you're through with that that is the last thing in the making of this dress and of course you have the strap which you are just going to go ahead and tie around your neck when you put it on i've gone ahead to secure the ends of the dress and that's all for this tutorial thank you so much for watching